Good evening, Pastor Jerry here from Calvary Baptist Fellowship, Sturgeon Bay, Wisconsin. Welcome you to join us tonight. Thank you for coming and watching us. And then uh, pray that you just guide and direct. If you'd like to visit us, we're at 915 Egg Harbor Road, Sturgeon Bay, Wisconsin, right across the street from the Dairy Queen. We love visitors, so please, if you can, please feel free to attend sometime. Morning services, Sunday morning or at 10 o'clock, Sunday evening at 5 o'clock. And again, we welcome all visitors. Take your Bibles, turn to the book of Proverbs, if you would. We've been going through the book of Proverbs quite slowly, really, and a lot in it. A lot on living your life for the glory of God, how to respond to criticism or rebuke, how to uh, how sometimes to take and, and to rebuke somebody. Uh, talks about your speech, talks about your actions, talks about your thoughts, talks about financial matters and uh, etc. So uh, Jake can um, just uh, take a look at this if you would. Proverbs 29.8 is where we're going to start. Proverbs 29.8 today. Proverbs, you know, scornful men bring a city into a snare, but wise men turn away wrath. Scornful is the idea full of contempt, includes uh, both anger and disgust, uh, to deride or mock or to scoff at. Uh, men today, uh, leaders, are scornful of honesty, good morals, hard work, and especially the God of creation. And uh, they simply do that which is right in their own eyes. Uh, it doesn't matter what God thinks, God wants, God desires, but uh, they're going to do uh, what they think is right to keep them into power uh, on this. Uh, we find that uh, there was a, a whole city that scorned Lot and his righteousness. There were kings of Israel and Judah uh, that mocked God and their idol worship. Uh, doesn't it seem strange that one administration uh, after the wisest king of Israel to lead a nation uh, that the nation split and civil war broke out leading to the final destruction of that great nation. Uh, on the flip side, if you would, take a look at me if you would, in Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles chapter 1, uh, and again I'm going to read to 1 through 30. Second Chronicles chapter 1, 1 through 30 if you would. Uh, here. Uh, interesting uh, opposite of what I was just talking about. And if our, boy, if our leaders would ever get a hold of this, America would be great again. Uh, Proverbs, to, uh, second, uh, excuse me, Second Chronicles chapter 20, beginning in verse 1. It came to pass after this that uh, the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and them uh, with them, uh, other beside the Ammonites came the Jehoshaphat to battle, came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this side of Syria, and behold, they be in Hezion, a Tamar, which is Engedi. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaim a fast throughout all Judah. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord, even out of the uh, cities of Judah that came to seek the Lord. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court and said, O Lord God of our fathers, art not thou God in heaven and rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the heathen and, and in thine hand is there not power and might so that none is able to withstand thee? Art not thou our God, who didst drive out the inhabitants of this land before thy people Israel, and gave it to thy seed of Abraham, uh, thy friend, forever? And they dwelt therein, and they built thee a sanctuary therein for thy name, saying, uh, If, when evil cometh upon us as a sword, judgment, or pestilence, or famine, we stand before this house, and in thy presence, for thy name is in this house, and cry unto thee in our affliction, then thou wilt hear and help. And now, behold, the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, whom thou wouldest not let Israel invade, when they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and destroyed them not. Behold, I say, how they reward us to come to cast us out of that possession, which thou hast given us to inherit. O our God, wilt thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us, neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. And all Judah stood before the Lord, their little ones, their wives, and their children. Uh, so we find here that again, a problem ensues, 
prayer follows right away. Now God is the answer to their problem. Verse 14, Then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, the son of Jeel, uh, the son of Mattaniah, a Levite, of the sons of Asaph, came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. And he said, Hearken, all Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou, King Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid, nor dismayed, by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow go ye down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Ziz, and ye shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jerusalem. And ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you. O Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. In other words, they were thankful for God taking care of them. And the Levites, the children of the Korthites, and the children of the Korhites uh, stood up to praise the Lord, the God of Israel, with a loud voice on high. And they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe his prophets, and so shall ye prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord that should praise the beauty of the holiness as they went out before the army to say, Praise the Lord, for his mercy endureth forever. And it does. And for when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, utterly to slay and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, everyone helped to destroy another. And when Judah came toward, uh, uh, toward the, the watchtower of the wilderness, they looked into the multitude, and behold, there were dead bodies fallen to the earth, and none escaped. And when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoil of them, they found among them in abundance both riches with the dead bodies and precious jewels, which they stripped off of themselves more than they could carry away. And they were three days in gathering the spoil. It was so much. And the fourth day they assembled themselves in the valley uh, Berka uh, for their... Get my page turned here. Uh, for there they blessed the Lord, and uh, and and therefore uh, the name of the same place was called the Valley of Berka unto this day. Then they returned every man of Judah and Jerusalem, Jehoshaphat in the forefront of them, to go again to Jerusalem with joy, for the Lord had made them to rejoice over their enemies. And they came to Jerusalem with psalteries and harps and trumpets into the house of the Lord. And the fear of God was upon all kingdoms of those countries uh, when they had heard that the Lord fought against the enemies of Israel. So the realm of Jehoshaphat was quiet, for as God gave him rest about. What an interesting story. Uh, when people see the problem and come to God in prayer, uh, God does answer. And God will, uh, will give peace and security uh, to a land. Uh, Make America great again. We need to turn to God. God may use certain people to help that in action, but God ought to be our focus in prayer and attentiveness, and then finally, in thankfulness. And so we find here again that in Proverbs 29, 8, if you would, again, scornful men bring a city in a snare, but wise men turneth away wrath. And it's wise to seek God. 29.9, if you would, if a wise man contended with a foolish man, whether he rage or laugh, there is no rest. Uh, quickly decide if you're debating a fool or an ignorant man that's willing to learn. Uh, the the uh, Proverbs has talked much about confronting somebody or being confronted. One needs to do it in a respectful, honest, loving attitude. And so we find here again, uh, there are cardinal foundations in life, and the fool will dispute them all. Uh, in their stupidity, they will argue that white is black, black is orange, uh, or uh, that good is evil and evil is good. Uh, they will laugh at you, mock you, criticize you. They might even get angry and raise their voice. 
uh, but uh, know uh, this up front, nothing you can say, or say it how you will, nothing will convince a fool that you're right. And by the way, I believe the only thing that's going to convince a fool uh, that uh, is right is God working in their life. The fool believes what he wants to believe. Uh, his head is full of silly putty molded by others uh, that are also fools. Uh, he will maintain his foolishness and refuses to study to make sure what he knows is truth. The fool will happily follow uh, the devil into hell, knowing it's much better than heaven. In other words, I would rather be with the devil in hell than in heaven with the God who invented hell. And so, uh, the foolish. And again, make sure that you decide, is it a fool that I cannot change, or it is one that God is working on uh, that I need to be instrumental in helping to change. 29.10, if you would uh, the, the bloodthirsty hate the upright, but the just seek his soul. Uh, I note here that our Lord is a perfect picture of this. Uh, he healed, gave sight and hearing, raised the dead, fed the thousands, yet people hated enough to kill him. He told his disciples that man uh, would hate them. He tells us that we will be persecuted and despised. Matthew chapter 5. Uh, Stephen is an example of this also in Acts chapter 7, 51 through 60, as he addresses the Sanhedrin council there, uh, where he attempted to explain the history of Israel and how the Messiah came through, and, and yet they refused to listen to him and believe. As a matter of fact, they killed him, stoned him to death. Even today, in a secular world, uh, this proverb's true. Uh, there are countries that seek the death of America, we feed the nations. We pump billions into destitute countries. Uh, we send doctors abroad. Uh, we attempt to supply medical needs and medicine, and yet it turns uh, that they hate us. The way it is. Proverbs 29, 11 says, A fool uttereth his all his mind, but as wise man keep it in until afterwards. Uh, we find here that a fool uttereth all his mind, uh, this reminds me of a drunkard uh, who has lost his inhibitors and freely spills whatever dribble drops from his mind, whether it's truthful or sewage. Uh, the fool cannot control his tongue. He must top your story, uh, uh, regardless of what you say. He must criticize what you're saying. He must put you straight. Uh, he must, especially in anger, tear you to shreds, and nothing is withheld. That's the fool. And unfortunately, uh, we see many of those. In the second part of this, he notes here, a wise man keepeth it until afterwards. Uh, sometimes it's better to be quiet. Uh, our Lord, again, is a picture of this wise man. He didn't tell the disciples everything that would happen to them because he knew they couldn't grasp it all. Number one, respond. Don't react to somebody. It's better to wait until you can control your speech instead of blasting another with coarse speech or a raised voice that is perceived as anger. And again, all of us have felt uh, this of other people, uh, where people raise their voice and uh, right away it, uh, it removes the ability to respond and one wants to react or not do anything at all. 29.12, uh, find if a ruler Hearken to lies, all his servants are wicked. Uh, I note here the top rung of the ladder is broke. Beware of the rest uh, of the rungs, they will soon break also. Rush Limbaugh speaks of this as good men going to Washington to change corruption only to be soon swallowed up by the beltway uh, and involved in corrupt politics as usual. Um, if the manager at your work is crude, um, and uses filthy language, angry, or etc., then it will infect uh, uh, the workforce uh, like the Black Plague. Uh, there are key uh, uh, players in our government that have built their support staff out of people who will tell them what they want to hear and not always tell them the truth. Uh, for some, it is hard to think of lies as wickedness, yet it is the opposite of a holy life. 
The one who has to lie is not trusting God to take care of them or to be honest. Uh, so we find here again that uh, lying becomes a part of our culture, part of our society, and unfortunately part of our government. Proverbs 29, 13. The poor and deceitful man meet together. The Lord lighteneth both their eyes. Uh, it's a wondrous thing that God can work his great work of mercy and grace in anyone's life. Uh, notes here uh, that uh, countless poor folks have found happiness, peace, and even contentment regardless of their poverty. Uh, they have discovered uh, the greatest treasure of all, the Lord Jesus Christ. They have peace with God of all creation and are content with raising a family on meager wages and, uh, and, and doing without. I grew up in the 50s and, and uh, mainly and uh, graduated from high school in 1965. And uh, our family was, we lived out in the country. Uh, we had basically very little. Uh, my mom and dad loved us, my two sisters and myself. Uh, they did their best to take care of us in spite of some bad circumstances. Uh, they provided for us. Uh, I don't think we ever went hungry uh, and we were cared for, but we did without. Christmas was very meager. Generally, you got one toy and then maybe a couple of uh, some clothing and that was it. Uh, we didn't have a toys galore as kids have nowadays and then want more because there wasn't more to want. And I think, to tell you the honest truth, we were a lot happier in the 50s and 60s uh, than, or in the 50s at least, than kids are uh, today that have everything. What a tragedy. Uh, but I know also that God also works in the life of the rich man, uh, trusting in deceitful lucre, uh, much like Zacchaeus or Matthew the tax collectors. Isn't it wonderful the rich man can pass through the eye of a needle if he's carried by Jesus? Look at me, if you will, in Colossians chapter 3. Keep your finger in Proverbs there. Be right back to it. Uh, Colossians chapter 3, uh, verse 10. Colossians 3, verse 10. And I put on the new man, uh, uh, and I put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity, which is a bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, uh, to the which also you are called in one body, and be ye thankful. So here we find uh, just uh, uh, the, the outcome of Christ working, uh, truly working in someone's life here, whether they're poor or whether they're rich. When Jesus enters, it makes a difference. Uh, 29, 14, if you would, please. 29 verse 14 uh, notes here, uh, the, the king that faithfully judges the poor, his throne shall be established forever. Uh, one could go to Jeremiah. Let's go back there, Jeremiah chapter 22. Oops. Jeremiah 22, 1 through 8 here. Jeremiah 22, 1 through 8. I think my Bible's got it. There it is. Jeremiah 22, 1 through 8. Now, Thus saith the Lord, go down to the house of the king of Judah and speak there this word, and say, Hear the word of the Lord, O king of Judah, that sittest upon the throne of David, thou and thy servants and thy people that utter, uh, that enter in by these gates. Uh, thus saith the Lord, execute ye judgment and righteousness and deliver uh, the, the spoil out of the hand of the oppressor and do no wrong, do no violence to the stranger, the fatherless, nor to the widow, neither shed innocent blood in his place. 
For if ye do this thing, indeed, then shall there enter in by the gates of the house king sitting upon the throne of David, riding in chariots and horses, he and the servants and his people. But if ye will not hear these words, I swear by myself, saith the Lord, that this house shall become a desolation. For thus saith the Lord, unto the king's house of Judah, and thou art Gilead unto me, and the uh, head of Lebanon, yet surely I will make thee a wilderness and cities which are not inhabited, and I will prepare, and I will prepare destroyers against thee, every one with his weapons, and they shall cut down the choice cedars and cast them into the fire. And many nations shall pass by the city, and they shall say, Every man to his neighbor, Wherefore hath the Lord done this unto this great city? And it was because they did not take care of the widows and the fatherless and the poor. Uh, uh, the nations, uh, rulers, uh, uh, reveal much about themselves uh, by the way uh, they treat poor people. When poor people are mistreated, they may rise up against the oppressor, or the nation may be sold into the hands of invaders of God. Uh, the rich will look after themselves, but the poor will look to the government for defense and help. Our courts have sold out to the wealthy, and the poor oftentimes only get uh, mediocre defense. Or the government exploits the poor in order to keep themselves in power. I believe it's the government's responsibility not only to help the poor, but expect them to work so that they aren't always poor. Um, our liberal government and its giveaway programs have hindered people from making good choices to pull themselves out of poverty. Uh, for example, it's welfare. Have more babies and we'll give you more money. Uh, alcohol is a disease, uh, not a choice. Well, and in my own opinion, uh, and again, uh, we have enslaved the Indians and blacks because we expect nothing out of them, so we pay them to stay weak or stupid. When if given a chance, uh, would prove themselves to be hard workers and quite intelligent. And I think we've seen that. Uh, under this president that we have now uh, with the growth of our economy and bringing factory jobs home that uh, many, many that were out of jobs, didn't have work, were put to work. And again, uh, I, would, <clears throat> I would rather work alongside a hardworking black or an Indian or a Mexican than a slothful white man. And may God just have his provisions in our country. May it guide and direct. We thank you for them all. Father, we just pray that you guide and direct. Help us, Heavenly Father, to bring you glory and honor with our lives. We do pray for our nation, Father. Lord, there are many that are unhappy. There are many that seek to destroy and to steal and uh, to, uh, Father, to vandalize. And, uh, Father, yet there are those that uh, seek protest and I pray that you guide our country. I pray, Father, that the Lord, you bring the jobs back, build the economy, put people to work that can't have work. May our government see fit to bring jobs and train people that are untrained to do the jobs. May, Father, we see great things done for your glory and honor. And Father, I pray that you direct uh, each and every one of us, regardless of what color we are or what nationality we are, that we acknowledge that we are Americans and we're going to uh, do this together. And I pray that you just help in this. We love you, we thank you, and we praise you in Jesus' name, amen. Lest anybody should say, with my inclusion of that last uh, uh, couple of sentences there, that I would be prejudiced, uh, may they know that I'm not. I would rather have uh, a church full of blacks uh, than, not, uh, than anything else. Blacks being excitement and enthusiasm to services. And uh, again, my parents, my dad especially, was friends, great friends uh, with colored people in his day, and he taught me to respect them all. And uh, so uh, if you're black, have nowhere to go to church, you're welcome at Calvary Baptist Fellowship. And uh, we love you. And uh, we want God's best for you. And may you have that. May you know Christ is your Savior. That's the foundation.